Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the OSBF domain ID and specifically how it's used in MPLS. Um, when I was setting up this MPLS lab, I ran into a little bit of an issue trying to get OSBF to work over it. Um, I, fi I found out something is a little bit different with XRV as opposed to, or sorry, iOS XR as opposed to, you know, regular iOS. So I thought I'd show you, you know, the problem, the solution, and it's a good talking point on the OSPF domain ID. So the lab we have here is pretty simple. Uh, we're only going to be focusing on customer blue because this is the customer who's running OSPF. So we have an OSPF peering here and then an OSPF peering here. So just remember router 7 and 9 are running OSPF. So let me go down to one of them. I'll just pick, I don't know, router nine, I guess. And I'll do a show IP route for OSPF. So what we could see here is that all these routes are showing up as OE2 routes. 7.7.7.7 um, .7 is one of my internal customer routes. It's just the loopback of seven. So I don't want them to be showing as OE2 routes. So the first thing we need to do is figure out why they're showing as OE2 and then fix it. So if I go up to, well, let me explain this to you first. Both of these routers, um, R5, which is a PE, is actually has a BGP peering here with R1, and then XRV here has a BGP peering with R1. And R1 is running as a route reflector. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because it'll be easy to see the difference in the routes that are coming from R5 and XRV. So let me head over to R1. And the first thing I'll do is let's just take a look at the routes that we're learning. So I'll do a show BGP VPN V4 unicast all so again we're going to ignore all these from um these are route six to eight we're going to take a look at seven nine and i have this route of all sevens coming from router five and then this route of all nines coming from this is the xr box so what i'll do is let's first look at the routes coming from seven And then just on the same screen, just so we can have it, we'll take a look at the routers coming from the XR box. Okay. So the difference that we're going to see is in the one coming from seven, I have this extended community with the route target and then the OSBF domain ID, which is a bunch of hexadecimal values. If I look at the route coming from nine and look at the extended communities, I see the route target, but I don't have any of the OSPF domain ID information. So the problem here is that since one of them has the domain ID and one of them doesn't, when the routes get, here, let me go back to the diagram. When the routes get sent across from, it doesn't matter which way we go, let's just say router five over here, they have the domain ID of a bunch of hex, which we'll go in a moment, which we'll see in a moment. When XRV receives that, it looks at that domain ID, sees that it doesn't match any of the domain IDs on my router, so it just sends this down as an OE2 route. And the same happens in the opposite direction. XRV sends it to router 5, which doesn't have a domain ID. Router 5 looks at it, says, okay, this OSBF, you know, this is clearly an external route, sends it down to router 7 with an OE2 route. So what we need to do is make sure the two routers together have the same OSBF domain ID. That way when router, let's say router 5 receives it, it'll match up the domain ID to its current OSPF instance and, um, you know, give it down as an internal route. Um, in this case, it would be an OIA route. So first thing, 
let's take a look at the different ways we could view the domain ID. Now, obviously we see it here, which this information is gonna be really useful to us. So I'm, I'm not gonna get rid of this. We'll actually make a note of this for later. The other thing we can do is if we go to router five, and if I do a show, um, and I realize that I've been doing this pretty small for you guys, so let me, if I do a show IP OSPF 79, one of the first lines is right here. Domain ID type, and then the value of 00079. So with iOS or iOS XE, the domain ID for OSPF comes from the process ID. So I could show run section router OSPF 79 just to show you guys, I didn't you know, manually configure this. This is all my configuration. We're doing some redistribution and I have a network. This domain ID type and value was automatically created by iOS. So the reason why we're having a problem is that iOS XR does not automatically create it. So for XR, we need to go ahead and, and manually set that so we're gonna to go to configure mode. If you haven't used iOS XR, it's, it's honestly not that much different. Um, there are quite a few things that are different, but the configuration you'll see won't seem too foreign. So we're gonna to go to router OSBF 79. Um, in this case, we have to configure it under the VRF and it's just the domain ID. So the first thing we need the type. So the domain ID type in hex format. 0005, so if we went back to R5, we see it was 0005, perfect. So we'll do that. The next thing we need is the value, and it needs to be in hex format. So if I went to router five, you could see I have it in this dotted decimal format. Luckily, if we go over to R9, we already have it here. Um, and it's actually everything after the X. So I will copy this, paste that in. Uh, but see, this is the, the difference between iOS XR and iOS. Um, uncommitted changes found. So with iOS XR, you have to commit your changes. So I could do a show config and it tells me the changes that I made. They're not currently live on the box. Let me commit the changes. And now let's go up to R1 and let's take a look at that nine route. And now, as you can see before under community, we didn't have anything, but now under extended community, we have the domain ID, which is what we set. And if we look back at the seven route, we can confirm that the type is the 0005 and then it's the 4F0200, 4F0200. Now they're the same dom domain ID. So now if we go back to router nine, which we had here with all the OE2 routes, now they're all OIA routes. So that's what the domain ID is used for. Um, if you're running iOS or iOS XE, you probably, you know, in your lab, you you didn't even realize this was happening uh, because it does it automatically for you, especially if you configure the same um, OSPF instance ID. Now, the things that would be different is, let's say you had two IOX, iOS boxes. Um, let's just say that like we have a PE over here, you know, with a, with a customer. And on this customer box, you configured OSPF, OSPF, like 80 and here is OSPF 79, 79. The problem is the OSPF domain ID would be 80 because iOS automatically, automatically configures it that way. Where router five, the OSPF ID would be 79. So in this case, let's go back to, um, let me get rid of that. On iOS, 
router OSBF 79, if we look through our, you know, our help at first glance, here we go, domain ID, OSBF domain ID. So if for some reason you had to configure both sides different, you could come in here and domain ID and you know go through the same same thing but you'll notice that you can do ip address format here for the domain id which was like zero you know we could have done 0, .0, .0, .0, 0 0.0.0.79 so remember that they have to be the same or else the routers the pe routers are going to consider them to be separate ospf instances um think of it almost like a a, a route target in bgp or like a, a route distinguisher you know this is how the router knows that it actually belongs to the same customer OSPF instance. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below and we'll see you on the next one.